Journeys of Hope. Life is a journey, and this is your spiritual passport. Where will the journey take us today? Let's walk together as we learn to become people of faith and hope. Welcome to Journeys of Hope. I am Jason Nunez, and I serve as Media Production Coordinator for Pilgrim Center of Hope. Pilgrim Center of Hope, producer of this weekly radio and podcast program, is a nonprofit ministry founded in 1993 with the mission of guiding people to walk in hope with Christ and the Church. Pilgrim Center of Hope is located in San Antonio, Texas, and since April 2019, we've been pouring our hearts into creating journeys of hope every single week. It's a labor of love, and we can't wait to share it with you. This week, we are happy to share a jewel from our archives, taken from our former television program. For over two decades, Pilgrim Center of Hope produced several programs that aired on Catholic television of San Antonio including a program called Living Catholicism. In this encouraging episode, co-founder and director of Pilgrim Center of Hope, Mary Jane Fox, explores the question which has echoed across time. What are you looking for in life? If you're looking to deepen your faith and find new inspiration in your spiritual journey, consider this episode an essential addition to your playlist. On today's journey, you will Reflect on the teachings of John 1, 38. Hear a message of hope from Pope Francis, reminding us that drawing nearer to Jesus illuminates our path with hope. And unlock practical advice for deepening your spiritual journey. Without further ado, here's Mary Jane. Welcome to Living Catholicism, your weekly TV program here in Catholic Television to introduce you to topics on the faith, to help you on your pilgrim journey each day. These topics are to encourage and challenge us to live with hope and faith each day. Living Catholicism is a production of the Pilgrim Center of Hope, which is an evangelization ministry here in San Antonio. We were founded 25 years ago, and our mission is to guide people to Christ and His Church. My husband, Deacon Tom, and I serve full-time at the Pilgrim Center of Hope. We are missionaries of hope. I'm glad you've joined me here on Living Catholicism. Today's topic is another good one to help us to think about our relationship with Christ. But to look at the scripture specifically, a question that Jesus asked, what are you looking for? You know, in the scriptures, we find Jesus through his public ministry either ask a question to someone who approaches them, him, or answers with a question. Perhaps this is because he wants to stimulate thinking of that person or have them be specific on what they're looking for. One scripture quote that I'm thinking, or a story I'm thinking about right now related to this, are the two blind men, the two blind men in the Gospel of Matthew, where they're crying out to Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on us. And it wasn't until Jesus stopped and he heard them, but he asked them, he didn't heal them until they exactly uh, knew what they wanted. Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? And so it's really interesting that the Son of Man, the Son of God, ask questions to us. Well, today we're going to look at a specific question that Jesus asked in the Gospel of John. What are you looking for? Well, let's begin by reading the story from the Gospel of John. When, and this is from the, chapter, the first chapter. When Jesus asked, what are you looking for? Are you, and, and as you hear the story, I want you to place yourself in that, in that situation. But let me give you some background to help you. So John the Baptist is in the desert, Judean desert. And he is an adult. He's preaching and baptizing um, at the River Jordan. And he is, has some, some followers with him. And he, these men were this, his disciples, and they were his students. They, he, he, they have been hearing about the one who is to come, as John the Baptist said, he whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So imagine yourself in the Judean desert, people from all over walking to hear John the Baptist, seeing him uh, very rugged and shouting aloud as as he was known as the precursor of the Lord, you know, the Messiah is coming. So are we ready? From the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 35 to 39. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. 
the two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. They came and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day for it was about the 10th hour. Now, that was from the Gospel of John. And, you know, Jesus knew that there were people walking behind the two disciples after they had left John the Baptist were walking behind Jesus. And sometimes you feel when somebody's walking behind you, you turn around. Well, Jesus did. He turned around and he saw the two. And what are you looking for? He asked. And Jesus knew exactly who they were. Don't you know, the Son of Man? But he asked a question to instill, to sort of like initiate that stimulus, that thinking. But what was the response of John the Evangelist who wrote the Gospel of John? He was also called the beloved disciple. He didn't answer the question. He said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Don't we do that sometimes ourselves? When, when we are asked a question, we don't want to answer if it's challenging or thought provoking because maybe we need more time to think about it. Okay, fine, that could be possible. But the question that Jesus asked, what are you looking for, is something that rings true today and every day of our lives. We could probably take that question and put it in our Bible, in our mirror, on the refrigerator door, and think about that question Jesus asks us each day. Because it gives us a perspective. Let's continue to look at this. The question is directed to us because the Word is alive. The word is alive. It continues to speak to humanity since the beginning of time. And the two disciples in the gospel story want to get to know Jesus. They have heard about him. They have heard the Messiah was coming and John the Baptist pointed. Remember the scripture. Behold the Lamb of God. And so they believed John the Baptist and they started following the Lamb of God, Jesus. And so they seemed to be attracted to him so much so that the disciple the, the, of the beloved, the beloved disciple who wrote the Gospel of John wrote specifically what time of the day, the 10th hour, which uh, related to our time would be about four o'clock in the afternoon. So precise was his detail of encountering Jesus for the first time. And for the first time, he was asked that question, but he didn't answer it. So as he followed Jesus, he had the opportunity, of, obviously, to answer that question with his time with Jesus. Jesus' response was what? Come and see. When, when the question was answered by, where are you staying? He goes, come and see. And isn't that a beautiful invitation? Jesus isn't con uh, condemning or disappointed that they didn't have the right answer, as he does with us. He's not... Uh, I mentioned in one program, you know, it's not like these game shows where you have, you know, door one, door two, door three, and the prize is in one of those doors. And if you get the wrong door and it's, or if you get, if you choose a door and it's not the right door with the prize, you lose. But not so with God. We might choose things in the path that's not right for us or for our salvation or for our soul or for our well-being. But God knows and is patient for our salvation. And he is guiding us with, with uh, this question, what are you looking for? The, Penetrates the conscience, the thinking, it helps us to stimulate some thinking or some thought, some meditation. So as Jesus says, come and see, this is a tender invitation, a tender invitation to begin that intimate friendship, whatever choices we make in our lives. Uh, and, and the time in personal contact with Christ will be needed to make, him more, uh, make it more secure. The time in personal contact with Christ Gives, gives us more secure in our vocation because then that gives us confidence and assurance I'm not alone. I, I know there's times in my life, there's times in my life, brothers and sisters, that I, I just, you know, I'm tempted. Hey, I just want to throw the towel in or, uh, you know, you, you just, you, you get so frustrated because it's just those kind of situations. But this is the moment where we turn, like my spiritual director says, Turn that moment into a moment of praise and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I, I will follow. I will continue. I may not be out. You know, and so this is where, you know, these, these, the, the time and the, and the, 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 the personal me the meditation we take each day, the silence we take into prayer, this, this question that we're going to ponder for the rest of our lives can give us that hope 
that Christ continues to ask us, what are we looking for? Because what I was looking for maybe 20 years ago is very different from what I'm looking for today in my, in my spiritual life and in my journey in life, period. What I was looking for were a lot different, it, whether it be worldly or spiritual, both perhaps good or maybe not so good, but at the same time, as time went on, Christ is still there. And the question now is asked upon me and I can answer and still my answer may be different in another 10 or 20, 30 years. The Apostle St. John in this scene writes, it was again about roughly four o'clock in the afternoon. It's so, so dear to him that encounter with Christ. When was your encounter with Jesus? You know, somebody will ask you that. I haven't asked that question. I have talked to non-Catholics, uh, Protestants who, uh, and other churches, other denominations who've said, well, I encountered Christ at this time in my life. And we could say, well, there's been many encounters I've had with Jesus. As Catholic Christians, we can say it's our daily journey, of course. But at the same time, there's those key points in our lives when we could say, I've encountered Christ when I went through a healing or when I went through a retreat or when I, my eyes were finally opened and I realized the beauty of the Mass. And we can say, from my personal experience, this is what I experienced, and keep it focused on Christ. That is sharing the faith. That is indeed sharing the faith. So let's look at the first question again. You know, what are you looking for? What is the most closest to your heart, the most closest to your heart. And, you know, uh, it's good to do these kind of examination of conscience, uh, whether it be, you know, if some, doesn't that happen sometimes that pop in your mind when you're driving and you think, where did that thought come from? Well, you know, it's the Holy Spirit sometimes tugging us, poking us in the ribs. Maybe somebody's praying for you and, and uh, you know, the church is praying for us. Every time we, we come together at the Holy Mass, part of the liturgy of the words, if we listen to the words of the liturgy are so power, powerful, so we pray for those who are not here. Or those, uh, it, it, the words are, are so, so consoling. And so, uh, you know, we can take that to heart and say, what is the closest to my heart at this time? And, and when we think about that, we can, we can take that to the Lord and you can see how it becomes this, this uh, meditative, this relationship through meditation with Christ. Remember the disciples in the gospel uh, story um, that they were hoping to see him. They were hoping to see him and they did see him. Perhaps we can relate to this response about, you know, not answering the question right away, like John, the disciple did not answer right away, not knowing what to answer, what are we looking for? Or if we do answer, are we being bold or are we being so audacious? No, I think it's good to be bold and audacious. It is very good to, to, uh, to act as, as Jesus asked Peter to step out of the boat uh, at, there at the Sea of Galilee and to come to him. And Peter did walk on water as he kept his eyes focused on Jesus. And you know the story. When he, when he started seeing the rough waters around him and realized, oh my goodness, then the re, it, 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 he, his eyes were off Christ and he began to sink, and of course, Jesus saved him, as he does and with all of us in these, situa in these situations. So most, most often than not, people are trying to find the answer through accomplishments as measured by society. So the world will ask us questions and have demands, and these are rightly, they're proper in their place in our career life, in our vocation or responsibilities, even in our service to, other, to humanity. But at the same time, the, the, the foundation question, what are you looking for, is one that sustains us as we do comply with the other questions and the responsibilities in the world. Stay with me. We'll be right back on Living Catholicism. You're on the everyday journey of life, and sometimes it's tough to keep hope alive. Well, that's why Pilgrim Center of Hope is here for you. Not only does Pilgrim Center of Hope provide you programs like Journeys of Hope, but did you know you can also find other helpful media productions from Pilgrim Center of Hope on our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. Every first Friday, take an audio retreat with Jesus called Meet the Master. Every third Thursday, have a social with the saints. And our new series, Who is the Man of the Shroud, meets at the intersection of faith, true crime, science and medicine, history, art, and much more. Find it all at pilgrimcenterofhope.org or on your favorite podcast app. And keep hope alive in your daily journey. Pilgrim Center of Hope, 
guiding people to Christ. This is Angela Cialana. And I'm Jason Nunez. We are two of the hosts of Journeys of Hope, the weekly radio broadcast and podcast program that brings you inspiring stories of faith, hope, and love from around the world. We have an important message today to share with you. As we approach the fifth year of this program, because of you, we have been able to reach tens of thousands of people through podcasts and over the airwaves. When we say that Pilgrim Center of Hope's programming is supported by God's grace and by you, we truly mean it. We're grateful for everyone who has supported us to make our mission possible since 1993. This effort of support and the need for support is ongoing. Presently, Pilgrim Center of Hope is seeking monthly supporters who want to help us continue our mission of guiding people to encounter Christ. You can also make a difference by sponsoring a week of Journeys of Hope for only $50. You can dedicate a week of the program to a special person or organization of your choice. This can be a spiritual gift, in honor or in memory, of someone who has touched your life. Your dedication will not only honor your loved one, but also join us in our mission of evangelization and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ to thousands of listeners. Please consider becoming a monthly supporter of Pilgrim Center of Hope or Dedicated Journeys of Hope program today. You can do so by visiting pilgrimcenterofhope.org and click How to Help. There you'll find a donation form. Or if you'd like to dedicate a Journeys of Hope program, you can do so on our wish list. Feel free to call us at 210-521-3377 to discuss how you can partner with Pilgrim Center of Hope to continue guiding people to Christ. Thank you for your generosity. And as we say at Pilgrim Center of Hope, every little bit helps. May God bless you. Welcome back, Living Catholicism. I'm Mary Jane Fox. We're looking at the topic. Uh, actually, it's a question that Jesus asked in the Gospel of John. What are you looking for? As two of the disciples of John the Baptist had left John the Baptist to follow Jesus, Jesus turned and asked, what are you looking for? It's a question for us today. Uh, 2,000 year, and plus years later, that question rings so true. Our Lord is asking you, what are you looking for? Take that question and write it down. Think about it. Read the story again from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and, and, and just place yourself in that situation. I have done that. And you know, it's pretty, it can be consoling. There's times when I've been consoled. There's times I've been convicted. Wow. And there's times I've been challenged because at those moments in my life, I probably needed to be thinking about certain things. But at the same time, it caused me to move to hope, knowing that, um, well, since God brought those things to my mind, that, that means that I need to look at them. And I looked at them by in prayer. I took it to someone in confidence, whether it be a friend or your spiritual director or a conf- a confessor or, or someone that you can just simply talk to and say, I'm, I'm going through these, this situation. Can, can you just help me I'm going to sh- by shedding some light on this? And so, so this is what's, what's so good about this, uh, these questions that Jesus asked to help us to stimulate some thinking and some, yes, examination of conscience too. So w- then why is it that so many people who have accomplished great things are still looking to satisfy that question, what are you looking for? You see it in movies, TV programs, and in the world, real people that you know, maybe. They have got everything, but they're still, they still say, there's lack of meaning in my life. It's not a rare thing to discover in the news that someone who we thought was successful and had it all turned to drugs, alcohol, or even suicide. And unfortunately, it's a ramping rage today because of lack of hope, because of lack of direction, because of confusion. And it's really people are just seeking direction. Are we there to give them a little light, you know, to tell them your story? Maybe probe the question, you know, did you know Jesus asked the question, what are you looking for? Have you ever thought that? And maybe pr- propose that in a beautiful, in a very charitable way. The reality is that we can only find the answer to that question in the one who asked it of the disciple, Jesus Christ. And outside him, the pursuit of our purpose for being on this earth will end in sadness and even hopelessness, as we said earlier. St. Augustine, the famous quote of St. Augustine, and it's been quoted through the centuries, he said, our hearts are restless, O Lord, until they rest in you. How, how true, 
How beautiful. Our hearts are restless until they rest in God. And even if when we rest our our heart on God, our, our head on the heart of the heart of Jesus, as so many sacred art images give us of St. John the Evangelist at the Last Supper, placing his head on the chest of Jesus. So consoling and thought-provoking thinking, do we do that? Oh, in our spiritual prayer, um, one priest said, gee, I wish I could put my head in the tabernacle, you know, cause seeking God's answers or wanting to know what is God's will for me? Well, we all have those kind of thoughts or moments. Jesus, I, I need that stone tablet in the mailbox. You know, give me a sign. Um, I often say, but, but yes, give me a sign, Lord, but let me see that sign. Let me, and, and in the meantime, as I each day, each moment, each week, each month, however long it's going to take for me to discern a decision or whatever we, how long it takes us, we remain in peace in the, in the situation of it all. Um, Life, it, life is beautiful and it is a journey. And this is why the, the questions and, and, and that, the, that the Lord asked throughout the scriptures, um, you know, when, when, when people approached him, you know, they weren't offended, I noticed. You know, if you think about the two blind men, when Jesus asked them, he knew they were blind. He knew they wanted healing. But Jesus said, what, what do you want? What do you want from the Gospel of Matthew? And they said, we want to be healed we're, of our blindness. Jesus heals them. So remember, you know, we've said often through many programs on living Catholicism how it begins with a desire. A desire, uh, it's never too late. It's never too late. And for us who, maybe we go to Mass every day or every Sunday or we pray and we have our memorized prayers and our novenas and all good. But be very careful not to catch yourself putting God in a box. You know, sometimes we get into a habit that even our prayer is a habit that we get off. If we get off track of our my prayer time, my prayers, then we're, we're, what is that telling us? You know, and so these questions, again, what are you looking for? What do you want me to do for you? Uh, the questions that Jesus asks in the scriptures and there's others are thought provoking to help us to think and to, to run to him. Some of the most renowned sinners in history have become persons filled with joy, peace, and hope by following the one who asked that question. What are you looking for? So we can begin anew today. How? Imagine, or and if you tell someone they can begin anew today, how? Imagine yourself walking with Jesus. Um, he knows you. He looks into your eyes and sees who you are. St. Teresa of Avila, a great contemplative mystic, one of one the, who was the uh, renew the Carmelite order in her day centuries ago. St. Teresa of Avila, uh, a great woman, she said she would often imagine herself with Jesus. She said she'd even put a chair in front of her chair, she said, and she would picture Jesus in front of her and, speak, and simply speak to him. Uh, and, and, or imagine walking, you know, whatever you may do and walk through the park, or if you're walking, you're doing your exercise or you're, you're jogging, picture Jesus with you. I mean, take those moments of when you're not having to, to talk to someone else to maybe imagine walking with Jesus and to, to, uh, con to meditate on, on what that question, what are you looking for? How would you address to him? Oh, sure, he knows what you have done in the past, but that is the past. And so he wants to know today, what are you looking for? So we can begin anew by imagining, yes, placing ourselves with Christ. He invites us to begin anew when he said, come and see a tender invitation. Think of those words, tender invitation to follow him, to begin anew. So Jesus touches our hearts with his healing hand and experience his love um, by accepting him is how we can experience his love for sure. Many of most, I mean, some of the most beautiful treasures of the church are the sacraments and the sacrament of reconciliation is one that Tom and I embrace. And certainly uh, a lot of people have their, uh, they even schedule on the calendar. You know, we schedule doctor's appointments, exercise, appointments with the dentist, you know, children's activities. Whatever we need to do in our life, we schedule them on our on our calendar. And why not schedule a once a month confession 
uh, at your local parish or there's so many places in the Archdiocese San Antonio offering hours of the sacrament reconciliation. And so the confession is a way to begin anew at any time. And, so, and if it's been a long time since confession, I always tell people, don't worry what you're going to have to say. Just say, Father, it's been a long time. Help me. And believe me, Father, who is really Christ in persona Christi, will indeed help you and guide you. Another way is spiritual direction. And today there are spiritual directors, lay people, religious and clergy, uh, both priests and deacons that are available for spiritual direction or someone to confide in and talk to once in a while and say, as I said earlier, can you help me shed light on the situation? Talk in confidence with someone. Uh, have that prayer partner. Maybe, you know, call someone once a week. It's nice to let people know, I'm, you know, you, you, you came to my mind the other day. Are you, whether it be pop an email or a text or call them and say, you know, are, are you okay? I just want to, just to know that I thought about you. And, and having that, uh, someone thinking about you and concerned for you, a prayer partner is so important. Another thing too, and I often tell this to my niece and nephews, and, and, and I do this as well, is write down these things and present them to God. Does he know everything? Of course he knows everything. He knows what we're writing. But you know, it's that act of sitting down, thinking, writing, uh, some things that are really a uh, concern and present them to Jesus and even lay literally at, at the altar or before a sacred image or the crucifix. One, one uh, mother told me she places it at the foot of G uh, St. Joseph's statue in her home. I mean, such wisdom from you know, just everyday life, right? So again, the question, what are you looking for, Jesus asks us, is something that we can begin in you, is something we can take to our heart and we, we can begin in you each day. Um, it's, it certainly has touched my heart. It's made a difference in my life as I contemplated that question and continued them. You know, as Pope Francis uh, has a message of hope for us, and this message of hope is given every week on Living Catholicism, and this is Pope Francis. When we draw near to Jesus, we too see once more the light which enables us to look to the future with confidence. We find anew the strength and the courage to set out on the way. Oh, I love those words of Pope Francis. When we draw near to Jesus, you know, we find anew that strength and courage to set us on the way. We can conquer all things in the name of Christ. And uh, as the world says, the world, you know, life is beautiful. There's so many opportunities out there. And if we are centered in Christ, oh, what joy and boldness and passion and what strength we would have. So the message of hope for Pope Francis is one to take to heart. Uh, Living Catholicism, again, is a production of the Pilgrim Center of Hope. And I invite you to visit us. We're in Northwest San Antonio. You know, as you know, we're in a building that used to be a convent. Yes, for 25 years. It's now an evangelization center. We do have a chapel with the Blessed Sacrament. And our mission is to guide people to Christ and the church. And we do that in various ways through conferences, evangelization outreach, various programs in the church, and pilgrimages. So visit us on our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. And of course, we are a nonprofit. We welcome your donation. We always say, Every little bit helps, believe me, every little bit helps when you have a nonprofit organization but trying to do the will of the Father by being obedient to His call as missionaries of hope. Join me as we pray, as we close the prayer. Um, say, Jesus, I want to get close to you. I need your help. There is so much going on in my life. You know all things and you know each one of us. Please send your Holy Spirit upon us to assist us to walk closer with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Remember that all prayer from the heart, as sincere from the heart, is one that Christ hears and will run to and know that he is with you always. Thank you for joining us. What a wonderful program. This profound question posed by Jesus in the Gospel of John invites us to reflect deeply on our own spiritual journey and relationship with Christ. We encourage you to share this episode of Journeys of Hope with friends and family. As our journey comes to a close, let us give praise and thanks to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fellow pilgrims, we invite you to come visit Pilgrim Center of Hope and learn more about our threefold ministry of events, media outreach, 
and pilgrimage journeys. We are a nonprofit ministry. Join us in this vital mission of evangelization as we guide people to Christ and the church. You can learn more at pilgrimcenterofhope.org or by calling us at 210-521-3377. Fellow pilgrims, let's strive to live each day with love, faith, courage, and hope. Until next time, may God bless you.